Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. Live CUBE coverage here at VMworld 2019 in San Francisco. We're in Moscone North Lobby. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman. We have two great guests, David Appel, Vice President of C2 Space and Intelligence and Defense Civil Solutions at Raytheon, and Gil Schneerson, who's the Senior Vice President General Manager of VxRail for Dell EMC. Uh, great to have Raytheon. Anything with space, Stu and I are getting, get, get jacked up for that. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Gil, VxRail, got a customer here. Impressive rollout. Talk about the story. Um, well, I, I think it starts with um, the fact that we have recently announced our support for Pivotal Kubernetes Services over VMware Cloud Foundation, over VxRail, um, which has um, actually the only curated automated stack in the industry that allows people to leverage containers um, and infra infrastructure as a service under one stack. And, um, We've been doing this for about three years now in a different way called the Pivotal Ready Architecture. And Raytheon has actually adopted um, that architecture to help their customer, the Air Force, and that's why uh, we're here today together to talk about, you know, so the value Certainly of that. modernization couldn't be more important conversation in um, government solutions. You guys are a big provider, Raytheon, known for the tech chops, known for having uh, good engineering. Talk about the solution, what you guys did, what's the use case, talk about the uh, the deployment. Yeah, uh, with the, uh, what's going on in the federal government for a while is is the, the acquisition processes and, the, and what's taken sometimes years or decades to get software in the field is causing a lot of un unmet uh, requirements and needs of the ultimate user, the war fighters out in the field to be met. So we've been down a journey for the last uh, two years with Pivotal and Dell of how to help the Air Force modernize. The Air Force is, has gone under a transformation in a program called Kessel Run, which is where we've deployed uh, the Pivotal Ready architecture to allow us to quickly deploy an infrastructure and allow us to focus on the end users and, and develop capabilities that they need worldwide in what took years into now months and days. So it's, it's been a fantastic journey. Talk about that, what that means for the folks that might not know the pace of the procurement process. I mean, some of the stuff is like 1995 procurement rules. I mean, right. the modernization these days is such an important part of it because the impact is significantly relevant. Yeah, Share some I mean, color if, you, into the process. if you think about in the commercial world today, where applications, hundreds of applications, be deployed overnight and updates what on the hourly basis, uh, in the in the government space, it can literally take years to define a requirement. Then you have to go through a budgeting cycle all the way up through Congress, and then you have to go through an acquisition cycle that could take a year to complete. And so, by the time you're actually fielding capability, it is literally five years or more before by the time the need was actually identified. And in that five years, the technology probably yeah. changed, which means your solution has probably changed from what's currently available. So shortening the cycles is what it's all about. And that's really about having the right product at the right, right time, product. not the old product five years ago. How fast things change, it's pretty important to have that nailed down. It's pretty amazing, and you know, the, I, I think, um, you look at transformation, and there's, there's usually a trade-off. Yeah. What we have been working on, um, and what we're, announcing, but really what we've been living over the last four years is a way to transform but stay close to your core. In other words, transformation without trade-offs. And so if you can get your VMware stack now running containers um, in a fully managed automated stack, you don't have to change your skill set, um, and you can do all of that and start innovating while staying very close to your core competency, you know, you transform, but you don't have to go too far, and, and I think the story, what, what Raytheon did is, is fairly amazing because they turned, you know, what did you tell me, a 50 year old process, you know, in like, in, in, in less than um, half a year into an automated systems that, you know, saves the, 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 the US Air Force a lot of money. And lives too are, are right. saved. I mean, it's putting about people in the field. Right. This is about people's lives too. I mean, right. it's just the money making. But. And it's been about transforming the culture of, of the way the DOD does software. And, and the, the first example that uh, Gil was mentioning was uh, uh, tanker planning, which was uh, the ability for the Air Force to refuel flight missions in, in, in the air. Uh, would typically take uh, over eight hours to plan. And it was done by a whiteboard. It was done manually. And, if, and in order, order to automate that and shrink the time, again, that would have gone to that a five year procurement cycle. Uh, we were able to deploy new applications uh, using the Pitiful Ready architecture uh, within 150 days and get those out worldwide to the field. 
that's done two things. It's uh, from a financial perspective, it's saving over $200,000 a day in just fuel costs from optimizing the, uh, the, the, the tanker planning. But more importantly, it's actually more efficient and, and, and protecting the safety of those flight crews. They're not in the air as long. They might not be in a, in a hostile environment as long. So the, uh, the security of the, of the Air Force is uh, even more important. As Pivotal always says, they're outcome driven. That's pretty good outcome. Yeah. I mean, talk about the impact that, that you've had on everyone else around you because I'm sure there's some blockers in your way, uh, people's feathers got ruffled, but then people see success, they want to copy it, right? So that, it's, that's a pattern you see in, in a lot of government yeah. where, hey, there's a new way to do it, modern way. Yeah, so we're, we're, I'll answer that, we're seeing it in two ways. One, from a, from a broader DOD perspective, the Air Force was, was out front here, they, they, they established this. Um, and from a DOD perspective, what they're calling their Kessel Run Initiative is really taken off. You're seeing other, other uh, Kessel Run-like uh, programs being stood up, like a, a program called Kobayashi Maru, and, and Rogue Blue and a few others across DOD. So it's, it's, it's proliferating now across the DOD from a customer perspective, DOD customer perspective. From an industry perspective, uh, you know, our, our competitors are quickly trying to catch up to us and, um, and they're trying to you know, copy our playbook, but uh, you know, we're continuing to innovate and, and continue on this journey, so we're, we're moving ahead with, with Pivotal and, and Dell. First of all, David, I think Pat Kelsinger must have been talking to your team because you're mashing up Star Wars and Star Trek <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, 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 with Kessel Run and uh, Kobayashi uh, 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 there, but um, we talk about mashing up. The stack that you're putting together, VxRail was really built around simplicity. It, right. it, it delivers that, that's what hyperconverged infrastructure does. You start talking about VCF and containers and PKS on that. Kubernetes, nobody says is simple, but you know, help us walk through. You know, how simple is it to, for you to leverage and deploy this? You've got organizational challenges and other things, yeah, so, so you know, where's the solution? It sounds like you use the ready node, and where directionally is it headed? Yeah, let me, let me answer from this perspective. So we started this journey uh, with, with Pivotal and the Air Force about two years ago. And at that time, we, pro we started with a group of probably a dozen or less folks that actually even understood the technology or, or, the, or the, the products and the solutions that Dell and Pivotal bring forward. Uh, in those two years, we're now up to over 100 people um, fully embracing the technology. Uh, it's, it's creating an environment where it's easier for us to recruit and retain people because it's, it's modern, it's not the way old ways we used to do business. Uh, and we're finding that it's been very easy to deploy, very easy to train people up, and very easy to operate. So from that perspective, uh, it's, been a, it's been just been fantastic from not just the technology perspective, but also the cultural transformation perspective. Yeah, Gil, I, I'd love you to comment on that because you know, remember, gosh, when CI and HCI first rolled out, you know, the people that had those jobs were worried we were going to take their jobs away. Now, when I hear you know your customer talking about you know it's easy to train them and even easier for me to recruit and retain, that's a powerful story. Are you hearing that across your customer yeah, base? Yeah, I'll tell you what's a little different. In the past, um, we have simplified things and we've made um, work somewhat go away, but there was no alternative work. Today, every developer, every IT person, they can't wait to go and you know be a DevOps person, right? So. For IT, when we come in and we say, we're going to take the, this off your plate so you can free up your time, it really means something now because they know exactly what they want to do. <laughs> they want to go and they want to be DevOps, they want to develop new apps, right. they want to move forward, and so it's very synergistic in a way that we, we offload some of the burden from them and they actually do free up to do cooler stuff and then they like it. And they get to keep their traditional apps with containers, gives them great capabilities yeah, not I, to throw that's, away. And that's a great point, I think, and as I said before, and it's, it's really important for me to convey this, the transformation without trade-offs is, is a big deal. Because they can keep the application, they can have run the same environment, right? In our case, they can do it um, you know, at ease and in remote locations right. all over the world with less management, and at the same time they can innovate <laughs> and manage those environments. And I, I think as long as we can keep that up, we'll make a lot of people productive. Well, I got to ask David the security question because one of the things that comes up all the time, obviously, Department of Defense, security's top of mind. Um, industrial IOT are now not just malware getting in for credit card information. You're talking about actual equipment, you're talking about flights in air, um, hacking with physical things is a right. concern, and it's a big IOT kind of conversation. Um, you're in the middle of that, right. this is your world. What's your thoughts on the security uh, equation? Uh, you know, so we've obviously had to go through that in, get, or, in order to get authority to operate to push things into theater, and, and the, one of the strongest benefits we've seen is, is the, the DevOps 
process and the platforms has all that security built in, all the testing as we're going through it. So the, the thousands of the tests they're running as new threats are identified, the platform is updating with the latest patches or whatever it may be. So On the automation on side. On the automation side of it. So we're actually seeing a lot of the security, I don't want to call risks go away, but our ability to mitigate them is being built into the software itself. So we haven't seen an issue yet where we haven't been able to get things authority to operate and pushed out to the field. So there's a high bar there too, obviously. High bar, very high bar, very high bar. And that was part of the, also the challenge of getting systems fielded in months and days versus yeah. years because of the ability to get that operation. I mean, this is a really uh, big story, I think. One, you know, Ray, first of all, Raytheon, well-known brand, but the modernization of getting stuff into theater and or into produ your production theater, military operations, that's a big deal. I mean, I think people don't really understand in the Ireland government how fast this happens. I think that's a real testament to the solution. Yeah. So, I mean. Well, the powerful thing to it is, is uh, you know, the national defense strategy is all about capability, the speed of relevance. And that's all about technology. Uh, future wars aren't going to be decided by the size of your army or the size of your, you know, your arsenal. It's going to be about how do you get data to decision makers faster and how do they can act faster. And that's where software and this, this infrastructure we're putting in place and putting capabilities in the hands of the people that need it faster. That's, that's what it's all about. And you know, General Secretary Mattis, who was a former Secretary of Defense, said 48% of all the casualties are usually frontline uh, war fighters, right. and that's where the technology right. edges, right. so to speak. So right. again, this is such a cutting edge topic. Yeah. Talk about it for days. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about this? This is pretty exciting. I, I, uh, look, I'm just happy that every time I come into the cube, this is the second time I do it with a customer. You give me the opportunity to um, learn, you know, have a deeper relationship with one, one, one of my uh, well, probably now 7,000 customers, yeah. which you know is really hard to keep up with these days, and so. <laughs> You know, we make technologies for people to use, and when you see it in the field, yeah. you know, doing good, um, it's a great thing. Well, and it's a transformation it's story. It's, it's really one of the a great transformation yeah. stories. They have to. Yeah. Making yeah. a difference. Great. Yeah. David, would love to hear, you know, what, what's, what's on your ask for your, your partners that are deploying? Kind of give us a look forward roadmap that, that you can share. You know, again, I go back to everything we're about right now is speed and cap getting capability faster. Um, clearly in our marketplace right now, uh, we're fully embracing agile DevOps and everything it takes from, to, to deploy software from that perspective. Moving into things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, autonomy are the big things that are on our horizon from a technology perspective. And as our partners are in those areas and can help us bring more capability in that, that's, that's going to help the, our end customer, the DOD, fast as well, so. What's the big takeaway from VMworld this year for you guys? What's the, what's the big observation? Yeah, I'll be honest, this is my first time at VMware. Uh, I'm amazed, I was at Dell Technology World uh, a few months ago. I've really enjoyed it, I think it's a great, a great event and uh, I'm, I'm just enjoying learning all the technologies, so it's, it's, I've enjoyed the day. Gil, what's your big takeaway? Well, I'm part of the family, so I'm a little more familiar, and even for You're me, <laughs> no, no, even for me, um, the rate of innovation that VMware puts out there is, is, is amazing. Right, and you see how everything plugs together, and you see how the vision keeps um, being, you know, completed. Yeah. Right, and and you know, we're we're in a good spot in the sense that we actually have what people need right now, and we do it better than everybody else. And you'd think that being number one in almost every category, you'd be sitting there complacent. And no, you know, we keep pushing the envelope, yeah. doing more, innovating more, integrating more. So. It's very exciting to, um, to see well, that happen. Great story here, Raytheon. Congratulations Thank for you. your success. I think Thank it's super important to have a prepared military, yep. certainly in saving lives and doing it modern way is kind of a miracle these days in yeah. governments. Congratulations. And I thank our partners for continuing to innovate because that's, yeah. that's helping us, so. All right, great story. Thank you. Cube coverage here, VMworld 2019. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more after this short break. <laughs>